Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is going to be on SIBO and natural prokinetics. We're going to talk about things we can do to help move the food in our intestinal tract out, good healthy wave-like contractions. We're going to dive in in just a sec. And before we do, please smash that like button for me. Give me a comment down below. Really want to know what you guys think. And also make sure you hit that bell so you get notifications of great future content that is coming your way. All right, so first, let's dive in. What's a prokinetic? So there's different families. There's going to be herbals and there's going to be medications. These are essentially compounds that help move or stimulate our migrating motor complex. So here's our intestinal tract. This is our small intestines in the middle. All right, and essentially food moves through these intestinal intestines like a wave-like contraction. And this is known as the migrating motor complex, triple M. And part of what stimulates that is the vagus nerve. So vagus is Latin for wandering, right? So it's the nerve that wanders all the way from the brainstem all the way down throughout the intestinal tract. So very powerful. It stimulates these natural wave-like contractions that help move food through the intestinal tract. Now one of the major theories in why that gets disrupted is because of bad bacteria from the colon making their way back up into the small intestine. This is known as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So these bacteria move from the colon, right? This is the colon here, and this is the small intestine. So it moves from the colon or the large intestine back into the small intestine. And you see a couple of things that happen. You see an increase in hydrogen, or you see an increase in methane or you could see both. And hydrogen, typically, you're going to see more diarrhea. And methane, you're going to see more constipation. D for diarrhea, C for constipation. And these are just kind of generalized ideas. You can have hydrogen dominant SIBO and still have a constipation. Or you could have both and you could alternate in between. It's very possible. So this is kind of what's happening. And when these wave-like contractions and this migrating motor complex gets interrupted, it's going to make it harder to move food and intestinal waste through the small intestines, absorb it appropriately, and then move it into the colon and out into the rectum, into the toilet, so to speak. And if we have delayed transit time, we could reabsorb toxins, which isn't good. That's auto intoxication. Or if it goes too fast, it may be too liquefied. We may not be able to reabsorb a lot of those nutrients, fats, or electrolytes, and that could set us up for nutrient deficiency. So really important, we got to get to the root cause of why that is happening. So anything that can disrupt the vagus nerve will affect that migrating motor complex. So any kind of stress, any kind of just um, poor stomach acid, poor enzymes, emotionally the adrenals are going into overdrive, whether it's sleep or inflammation, whatever those physical, chemical, or emotional stressors are that fill up our stress bucket and that could negatively impact the vagus nerve, which put us more into fight or flight, and that could impact and decrease our migrating motor complex. Now there's some natural compounds we can use. We also have to get to the root underlying cause because a lot of these medications or even natural compounds may not allow us to get to the root cause. So we have medications such as low dose antibiotics like erythromycin at very low doses like 50 milligrams can actually help stimulate that migrating motor complex. We have serotonin agonists. These are agonists means they stimulate that serotonin receptor site. And that's procalipride is one of those medications, procalipride. We also have cholinergic agonists like neostigmine. Neostigmine is a cholinergic agonist. And then we also have dopamine, dopamine agonist, or that's metoclopramide, metoclopramide. And this is going to be a dopamine, actually this is going to be a dopamine antagonist. That's going to be an antagonist. All right, so low-dose antibiotics with the erythromycin. The serotonin agonist is going to be the procalipride. The neostigmine will be the cholinergic agonist. And the dopamine antagonist will be the metoclopramide. Those are the medications that are commonly used. There's some other trade names out there for them. But just kind of giving you the rundown of what they look like on the conventional medical side. Now, on the natural side, we may use things like 5-HTP. And 5-HTP, there's 400 times more 5-HTP or serotonin in the gut than anywhere else in the body. So 5-HTP actually has a natural ability to act like a serotonin 
agonist. It can stimulate the serotonin because it's a precursor to it. We also have things like ginger, which have been compared to many medications to actually be even more effective as a natural prokinetic. And it's also an anti -bi it's a natural biofilm buster, so it can kill biofilms and keep things moving. Uh, carnitine is very powerful. That stimulates mitochondria and helps that migrating motor complex as well. We also have magnesium. Thousand enzymatic roles in the body. So magnesium is very powerful for helping to move that intestinal debris out. Bitters, that could be chamomile, that could be gentian, that could be lemon balm, that could be orange peel. Any of these Swedish type of bitter herbs taken 5, 10, 15 minutes before a meal can be very helpful. There's a good formula called Ibirogas that has some of these in it. Uh, these are some really powerful compounds. Also trifola. Trifola is a really good herb that helps move food out of your intestinal tract as well. It's been compared to other, medica other medications as well and has done very well comparatively in some of these herbal drug trials. And again, just giving you one of these compounds may not be enough to fix the root cause. But if we can keep things moving and not reabsorb toxins or keep things from going too fast, when things go too fast, we actually may slow it down with activated charcoal or binders to slow it down. Typically, we'll use more of the prokinetics when things are going too slow to stimulate it, and we'll do more of the binders to slow it down if it's going too fast. We'll even use some probiotics too if that's an issue. So I hope this gives you kind of a, an overview of things that you can do root cause and get to the underlying bacterial overgrowth. A lot of times it's a hydrochloric acid and an enzyme insufficiency. A lot of times good bacteria is very low as well. Beneficial probiotics are on the lower side those have to be supported. There could be other infections outside of just SIBO. There could be CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. There could be various parasites, Giardia, Blasto, Cryptosporidium. H. pylori is also very common too. So you have to look at the root cause. What's the root cause? A prokinetic may not be enough to fix it, but it may be a very important piece of that puzzle to help support your digestion while you plug other pieces in there to get to the root cause and help support your body's ability to heal. So if you enjoyed this video, click below, give me that thumbs up, let me know your comments. And if you want to dive in deeper, click the schedule console below to reach out to myself or my colleagues so we can figure out what that next step on your functional medicine journey is. Thanks a lot. It's Dr. J signing off. Have a good one.